So how do we make use of all this information about heat? One important application is in the design of a thermos bottle. Let me take this one apart to show you. The outside is just a protective case. You'll notice that there's plastic all the way on the inside as well. The inner glass container simply sits inside the, the plastic. The glass portion is actually a double wall vessel. It's about five millimeters thick in total. The inside of the glass is actually silvered, made shiny, and that reduces heat loss or heat gain by radiation. The glass itself is a poor conductor, therefore it reduces heat transfer by conduction. Between the walls of the two vessels, between the walls of the vessel is a vacuum and that's what this part at the end protects. Let me just show it from another unit. You'll notice that this unit has a pointed glass tip on it. This is used to connect to a vacuum pump during the manufacturing process. So once the unit is assembled, silvered, the air between the two walls is then pumped out using a vacuum pump and it is then sealed. That is covered with a protective cap. In this case I'm just using a rubber stopper. In this case here it's a special um, stopper, special guard that has been glued in place to protect the tip. Once the tip breaks, the vacuum is lost and the thermos no longer works as efficiently. But removing the air between the two glass walls, conduction is also reduced. Air is actually a rather poor conductor, but when there is no air present, you have a vacuum, and with a vacuum you can have neither conduction nor convection. So the three ways in which a thermos reduces heat loss, a shiny surface to prevent loss by radiation, it's made from glass, which is a poor conductor, the space between the walls is evacuated, so there is no convection or conduction possible. Enjoy your hot lunch! <laughs>